important. All right, everyone. This is an important lesson. I think I'm gonna record it twice. Beauty, facing history style. Let's see how this class does. Love teaching this lesson. So I'm gonna let people in. You could scrub ahead, see it. Important lesson. Sure you log on to Nearpod. Good morning, Sam. Morning, Mia. Morning, Andrea. Log on to Nearpod. Open up your deck. Close your tabs from your other class. Very important lesson today happening. Good morning. Make sure you're on Nearpod right now. So close all those extra emails. Make sure you have the deck open. Good morning, Kat. Really, really important lesson. So as you come in, can you explain this quote in your own words? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What does that mean? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Can we explain that quote in our own words? Ooh, Miss Hibbler's back. Please explain this quote in your own words. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Hey, miss, you wanna take over? Hi, yeah. Good morning. Um, okay, here is the Nearpod link. Anyone want to unmute themselves and talk about what you think the quote means? Uh, I think it means that um, everybody has a, their own definition of beauty. Like what? Like what do you? What? What would your definition of beauty be? Like oh, mine's. Um, I'm not really sure. You know, I love that you said that because we don't know. Like, like, do we give ourselves the time to even think about what true beauty is to us? Is that, I, I kind of wonder, is that part of the problem? And I think it's normal in this society to not know. So everyone has a definition of beauty. I love that. Twinkles. There's beauty in everyone. Does that mean like, do you think that means like it's our responsibility to find it ourselves? Mm -hmm. Beauty is different for everyone. Like everyone sees things differently, like a pers different perspective or different types of beauty. Thank you, Andre. Andrea. I'm manning the waiting room, miss. Okay, thank you. Um, I think the quote means that every person interprets beauty from their own perspective. Yeah. I think it's in your eye if you're the beholder. 
But I think it's kind of like, I, I love how she said, I don't know what beauty is. It almost makes me think, Ms. Hibbler, like we should have an activity where we just give everyone like a good seven minutes to like contemplate, begin to contemplate what it might mean. Segway! Any other quotes stick out before we move on? Uh, I think that means every, everyone has different standards. Everyone has a different definition of it. Yeah. Can there be bad beauty? Is there like a bad definition of beauty out there that's lurking? In certain individuals' perspective or opinion on what they see as beautiful, people often think and say that true beauty is what is on the inside, not the outside. I think it means that eventually you will see something you like about yourself, like you'll finally come to accept yourself for who you are. Maribel, it's beautiful. Mmm, identity box might help us with that. What y'all think? Identity box, you remember? The project we're working on, that might help you. Sorry, miss, go on. Connections, everyone. You can see your valuable worth from your own perspective, since you are the one who is capable of seeing it. Yeah, like not just the things or people around you, but yourself too, right? Drop the mic, Angie. <laughs> so Miss, before you click next, can you give some shout outs to everyone who's on Nearpod so I can give some points? Because I'm getting lots of live points today. Two, two class okay. workers. Got Maribel, Andrea, Samuel, <clears throat> Mia, Priscilla, Catalin, Viri, Emilia. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, Mia, Priscilla. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Catalin. Catalin, Viri. Mm hmm. Vidi. Mm hmm. Sorry. And Emiliano, mm -hmm. Susanna. Rosales, Diaz. Mm hmm. Angelina. Mm hmm. Uh, Felipe, don't forget to hit submit. Mm hmm. And Wendy and Yahira. Oh, Rehira said, I think it means beauty is in everyone. They just need to see it themselves and stop seeking acceptance from others. Whoa. We got a couple people in the waiting room. Giovanni and William. My bad. Thank you. All right, miss. I think we're ready. I think that I think everyone's ready to like think about like beauty in a deeper way. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to define beauty? Woo! Make sure you're on your pod and today's deck is in the chat. Let's get this party started! <laughs> Guys, I just pulled a Kevin. That was so a Kevin. <laughs> Okay, but this is like important, guys. This is an important lesson. Miss Sibler and I are taking it super serious. It's gonna help you with your identity box. So please rock and roll, Miss. You're you got this. You you're you're on. All right, thank you, Miss. We got a DJ here too. So I just dropped the Nearpod and Deck link in the chat. Make sure you open those. Keep them open. And can anyone unmute or type in the chat and explain in your own words? We talked about this before, but just to review what is the difference between external and internal identity? Like what is your external or internal identity? We talked about this last class. The answer is in front of you. We love it when you unmute extra points, point pencil, live points happening. Um, your external identity is what people see, like, as I guess, when they both walk by you, like how you look, your high, your physical appearance, and then your internal identity is what you only know, like what has meaning to you, what you believe, like what you aspire. Yeah, thank you so much, Susanna. Yes, twinkles. Yeah. Um, I would have to say that external is like what Susanna said. I think it was her. Um, it's what you let people see in a way, like what you give off, you know? 
because external is what you're willing to like show, but internal is what only you know and like you keep with you. Um, Orion, hold up. So society's definition of beauty, does that live more on the external side or the internal side? Society, beauty. External. Okay, and then like the identity box helps us to move beyond that and explore what side, external or internal? Internal. Yes. Do, uh, or, uh, Orion, do you think people are aware of their internal beauty? Do you think people like on average have discovered it? What would you say? Um, is internal beauty? Like, do people, are people aware that they're beautiful on the inside? Um, some, I don't think that the people, like the people who have that internal beauty in them, like they know it, but like the people they're around know it. I don't know how to say that. <clears throat> like others know it, but the person themselves don't. Why is that? Um, see, that's not a question I can really answer for everyone. Yeah, but I, I would say that it has to do a lot with um with society and how it makes you view yourself. Ding ding ding! Sorry, miss. I had to butt in. Good job, Orion. Fire. Four. Amazing. Got lots of twinkles in the chat. <laughs> okay, so going off of what we were just talking about, some great points were made. So on this side, we're all going to be making like a collage of sorts. And you're going to be writing in the green bubble um, what like you think fake beauty or exterior beauty or like societal standards are. And like what you perceive that to be. Like you might not agree with it, but what do you think like beauty is seen as? And then on the blue side, you're going to be writing with what you actually see like true beauty as. And your personal definition goes on the side. So before we make our own collages, we're going to be like kind of interpreting the example that Miss gave us. <gasps> so, <laughs> I'm so nervous. I got to talk. I've never, I never talk in class. <laughs> yes. So I want you to um, circle if you don't, if you want me to explain why I put something, and then check if you agree. All right. So actually draw on it. And it's really important to see and digest an example before you do it yourself. Is anyone looking? We got. Ooh. Okay, Wendy wants me to explain. Okay, so Whoa. as far as truth, I feel like it's very, very important to be honest with yourself. And when you're honest with yourself, I feel like that's truly beautiful. Friends I have that have come out of the closet and you know said, hey, I, I am this person, um, I am, they are more beautiful. Like when, when someone like faces their truth and lets the sun hit them on their face, they have, it's like when you get rid of lies or a mask that's shielding who you are, it's like this way and people are happier when they are being honest with themselves in the world. So that's like one example. So again, circle what you want me to explain, check what you agree with. We got a lot of checks from Susanna. Um, confidence. So I feel like, you know guys like Kim Kardashian, I don't even really know who she is, but someone put it on their beauty collage. She walked around like this. Oh, my name's Kim Kardashian. I'm not that confident. Like she hadn't taken like a drama class, but it's like people are beautiful when they're confident. When they're happy, when they're joyful, when they love them, so like with the, it's like, hello, here I am. My name is Kevin Pastor. Like I'm confident. Like that's beautiful. It's beautiful, Kevin, wherever you are. I just came in. Oh, Kevin, I was talking about you, bro. You're beautiful because you're confident, man. I love it. Anyone else want me to explain anything? Got a lot of checks. Um... Ooh, experience. Why is experience beautiful? I, I feel like when you've been, like experience is when you've been through it, you know, when you've overcome obstacles, 
when you have put some time into something and you've learned lessons when someone has wisdom starting to see things when people are opening their eyes it's like oh this will make myself my life happier or this will help people and when you're imparting that wisdom on others that's that's beautiful um on the left side i mean that's how in 2001 when i was in high school everyone was bleaching their hair right i have like this duck poop brown hair right but even me i fell victim to it and i would like frost my hair like blonde you know think about like all that time i was wasting trends i mean you know like i remember i remember you know it was really in like these really low cut jeans when i was in high school right like and i don't know miss hibbler you must have been younger but i i don't know maybe maybe you were still around like maybe you were a kid but the jeans were so low cut you can't fit your booty into those things <laughs> these like low cut jeans everyone had a muffin top everyone and it's just sort of like i mean that trends are bad they are dangerous so i i, I was so excited when like high waist jeans they started selling those more and i was so like funny. yeah so oh, great they actually fit you and people like make fun of people who don't follow trends you know like they laugh at like styles just because like someone finds something more appealing or like you like you see that all over so you need to find beauty for yourself you need to create beauty for yourself so miss how are we going to get them started on this i hope this was enough of an example so go ahead find your beauty collage your facing history notebook and we are going to give you seven minutes to get this party started yeah that is on slide Slide number six. Oh no, Priscilla says low cut jeans are coming back, miss. No, I'm gonna add, that's it. I'm gonna order like five pairs of high rise. Thank you for letting me know, Priscilla. I like ordering extra if something fits me. So if you go to slide number six and you click on drama period two, it takes you to your own like digital notebook and it's um, alphabetical order by last name. So we got no A's in this class. So it starts with William and make sure you're on your slide. So you'll find your name in this like gray line with like the white background. So you might have to scroll for a while because there are a lot of slides. And you're going to be making your own collage in here. And to do that, you can just either go to the text I think I'm on Mia's slide right now, you're a slide 63, but you can get like a text bubble and just type in there. I will delete that. And you can also insert image, you can search the web and it just pulls up, I don't know if everyone's done this before, but it like pulls up a tab on the right side and you can like put in like any key term and just click on it and it inserts the image for you. I, you missed, you're so good at demoing tech stuff. I, I am not, but I'm going to click the chat right now and I'm going to see who's in there and I'm going to give live points. Um, miss, I think, okay, wait, can you, let's post the period to actual link so we get yeah. people directly. I, I got that. I'll let in Mia and then, oh, you got it. Okay. So yeah, maybe give them a little area arrow, click that one and we should all see you on there and miss how much time are we going to give them to start this assignment like society's definition of beauty on the left and on the right your true definition this is just the beginning how many minutes in class should we give them to start what do you think i think seven to eight so this is just the beginning right two beauty songs two beauty songs okay guys so I'm going to take you back to 2001 when low cut jeans were in. Beautiful day. You too. We should see you all working. Let us know if you need us to find images. Yeah. Let us know if you can't find your slide. I know there are a lot of names in here. I went to this concert live. The tickets were expensive. So yeah, let us know if you, yeah, if you need to find your slide. Points, the more you're putting in, the better. So we should see, I see seven people in here. If you need help, I'm scrolling down to the bottom of your slides. I'm going to paste my example at the very bottom. 
You're not messing with the yellow and the purple right now. But I'm going to paste my example at the very bottom so you could steal some of my stuff if you want to. Going in the bottom of the deck. So my example is now on 68 if you want to grab some stuff and paste. Okay, Miss, you want to narrate some of these kids that are on fire, the class of fire? Yes, we have Andrea. She inputted a picture of some makeup. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And makeup's not mm -hmm. bad, right? It's like when it goes when it goes too far. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not hating on makeup. I'm gonna turn that down. <laughs> and we have someone who posted a picture. Um, that is is that Maribel? And there's like a person holding up like a picture of like a Barbie, like over their face. And like their features are super enhanced. Oh. So like when you're trying to discover something, guys, in life, you have to discover what something is not. Right? So sometimes like when you're finding something, you're like, okay, well, I know that beauty isn't this. And then you're going deeper beyond the external, into the internal, finding all those layers. I love this assignment. Have fun. Okay, keep narrating, miss. I'm going to up Posted a picture of someone with like a measuring tape around their waist. Felipe, mm -hmm. or who did? Um, Viri. Viri. Oh, yeah. Viri Dio. It's a pretty name. Um, and I forgot what this actress's name was. Someone posted a picture of someone getting like plastic surgery or like injections. That's scary. Siri, start the timer for seven minutes. Okay. I think seven minutes and count. Sorry, it's, it's important to like also note like these things aren't like bad. I think they're just taken too far. Mm. I know we're not hating on makeup. You like makeup, that's good. I give myself a little bit of lipstick and eyeliner, that's cool. But when does it go too far? And like putting on a mask, mm -hmm. like a happy face. So you always have to be happy. Ooh, in my eyes, beauty is. Who is this? This is Wendy. That is beautiful. Anyone who starts this gets academic prep credit. This is the beginning of a very important exploration. Are y'all there? And let us know if you can't find your slides. I think you can even like control F and type in your name. So I see um, Priscilla, your name is like the first under Miss Coparas right now. So I'm just going to type in your name and see. Thanks for helping them, Miss. And thanks for writing their names. Miss wrote your names for you. She loves you. She loves you guys. Oh, Karen is coming in right now. Got it. Maybe you can't control F on PowerPoint. <laughs> oh, you can't find their name? I don't think so. Ooh, okay. I see stuff popping in live. I love this. Okay, I'm going to find another beauty song. Oh, you can't. Okay, yeah. If you control F and just type in your name, you can go to your slide. I see people hopping around. We should see you on your slide. And again, we're gonna, we're at the end of this song, make sure you have something on both sides. Both sides. Personality. Nature, that is really so pretty. And this is a good chance for you to start to think about your identity box, right? Like all this, what you put in this blue bubble or the right bubble, this is like also like another brainstorm for the identity box. Because your perception, what you see, that is so key to who you are. That's your attitude. That's like coming from your heart. Happy is the man. 
who can make a living by his hobby. Ooh, Emiliano, this is you. I love it. I love this kid. I love all of you. But like, look. He can oh, he's like, like changing his mind too. What? Oh, sorry. I was just saying you can even write like words into this. Like I see a lot of people using like word pictures. So you can like, someone wrote like a little essay in here yesterday, didn't they? I know. And then she ended up like teaching the class. So really pour your heart out. Like give yourself this chance to really think like, what is beauty to me? Like I, a newborn baby is beauty to me. They may have their faces all scrunched up and they're like, eh, but that's beautiful, man. That was work. Okay, end of this song, we're gonna kind of wrap up this activity and you'll have more time during academic prep to finish. Mm, laughing. Mm. I know I hate it when kids go, ew, when I laugh, but isn't that so beautiful when someone laughs? That's like- I love contagious laughter. That's like the crescendo of life. I love it when my husband laughs so hard that he's crying. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> you get like a workout in laughing so hard. I know. I know. We need to do that more. Okay, pour it out. And I think like, oh, sorry, miss. Oh, no, you're on, miss. You're on. Um, we were talking yesterday. I feel like um, some, like I've heard my male peers also like comment on this. Like, like we kind of look to like, female beauty standards because that is definitely I think very prominent in media and stuff but I think we kind of forget sometimes that males like they don't have like makeup but they still like struggle with like other things with body image issues and like I think it's important to acknowledge that it's like not like one gender or the other. True. Oh. I think a lot of the men in this world are struggling with identity and self-confidence. A lot of men are. And they find it in the wrong spaces. Or like mental health. It, it, all of this contributes to it. And there are some dangers here and like knowing the difference and like finding yourself, finding your beauty, really like expressing yourself is so important. Miss, as you kind of like finish up your narration, um, can you just let me know every kid who has something, anything on their slides? I'm going to give them a start for uh, starting their academic prep. Okay. We got Wendy. Got her. And Susanna. Mm-hmm. Oh, Susanna really got a lot in here. I love this photo of people laughing. Way to go, Susanna. Samuel. Got it. Um, Catalin. Mm hmm Yahira. Mm-hmm. Hey, girls. This looks, looks so peaceful. Just sprinting across the beach. Karen, where are you at? Yeah, um, Karen, your slide is number 21. I'm gonna repost the link for you, Karen. Okay. And Felipe, I see you're here. I see like you're on your slide. Just don't forget, like you need to insert an image or words. And Vidi. Mm-hmm. And Jalen. Mm-hmm. Orion. Mm-hmm. Kevin. Mm-hmm. Nick, sorry, Nicholas. Uh -huh. Angelina. All right, let's go hard. Yes, raw emotions. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The voice singing, beautiful. Emiliano. Uh -huh. Priscilla. Uh -huh. Maribel. Uh -huh. Andrea, uh -huh. <laughs> people are going to judge you anyway, so forget everyone and be yourself. Go, you go, girl. You all hold on to that. Mia. Mia, yes. I love how she's using quotes. Like You guys can like type in quotes, too. Oh, social media problem, yes. Giovanni. 
respect people's feelings. Even if it doesn't mean anything to you, it could mean everything to them. This is a really cool photo. Like their face is like collaged into all these different emotions. Google image is amazing when you guys are like finding ideas, like it's such a powerful tool. So the yellow and blue one, this is kind of like academic prep map, miss if you want to click. So just to reemphasize, we're going to explore, click on the yellow blue one, please, miss. Oh, sorry. Sorry, like that. Yeah. Just it like, so we're going to explore like what contributes to this distinct distinction between the external and the internal. Um, why, why is this such a problem? Like beauty. So I want you to think about negative, negative behaviors, human behaviors versus positive human behaviors. I want you to, after class, start to put some thoughts here as well. And this is going to contribute to your facing history digital notebook, which will lead to your sophomore promise. Okay, so this is beyond the lesson, yellow, purple. Okay, take it away, miss. So yeah, they're defined. So guys, now you would define your own definition on your pod. Now that you've done that thinking, so remember beauty was like, I don't, or was it Priscilla? Like, I don't know what beauty is. What is true beauty in your eyes? You can use the sentence frame, blank is beauty because blank. So and just like, oh, go sorry. on. No, you go. you go. Oh, I just want to say that uh, just like how we, how, like we opened like this, there's no right or wrong answer. So just type what you believe. Miss, what would you say is beauty for you if you use the sentence frame? Ooh. I feel like I've done less thinking for this lesson. <laughs> like, I'm mm -hmm. um, for example, for me, I would say my grandmother, Ingeberg Chapman, was beauty and is beauty because she still lives in my heart because she took care of us and always put others before herself and still made time to create art. So it could be like this run on sentence, you know, you could explain it, but just really, really like share what beauty is to you. You got a definition yet, miss? It's hard, it takes some time. Um, I think caring about others is beauty because it takes a lot um, to like go out of your way and like take care of other people, and, like even more so if you like don't really know them. And what you put here is central to like what's at the center of your identity box. Cause this is a philosophy, this is a belief, this is something, this is part of your intellectual identity. So please type, 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 hit submit. Cause we got move on. We have more plan for y'all. Big plans today. Big plans, big plans. Ooh, friendship is beauty because you can trust them and you have a beautiful and strong bond with them. Doing whatever makes you happy is beauty. Being yourself is beauty. Self-confidence is beauty because being able to love yourself is difficult when you hear all these beauty standards, but when you do it, it can be beautiful. When you do, sorry, when you do, it can be beautiful. Kindness is beauty because you don't owe anyone anything, but you still try and make everyone happy. I think that's what I was like going for. <laughs> you put my thoughts into words. Um, I feel like you are truly happy with a hobby. If you are truly happy with a hobby or something like that, then that is true beauty because to me, I like playing sports and lifting weights. Right? You're being who you are. Yeah. You're like in your element. And that's almost like spiritual identity when you're kind of like at, in that moment. Like this is where I'm supposed to be. Okay, guys. So type up, hit submit. And again, we're just scratching the surface. We're going to go deeper. And you could have many definitions. Oh, sorry, miss. Keep narrating. Oh, no. Um... Susanna posted, I believe beauty is when an individual feels they're most confident and accepts themselves for who they are, whether it may come to be what or who they care about, their hobbies, their relationships, who they love. Guys, take a snap of these definitions. They're amazing, huh, miss? Yeah, this is like all internal identity stuff, isn't it? 
We are tying to what you're working on during async days, everyone. You're working on your identity box during this asynchronous day. Samuel says, imperfection is beauty because it is something natural and you decide to keep it no matter what. Being kind is also something that many people appreciate. Sam! Sam! I actually, I had a um, ceramics teacher who would say that a lot, like imperfection is beauty. Like every time like we try to like make like a perfect pot or something and you end up with it like lopsided or like with a dent in it or something and like you mess it up in some way everyone's so upset that they like messed up their artwork but then he says like it just adds character to it and it like made you feel like your work was really beautiful our scars are beautiful my baby has one scar here and then one on his chest and he went got through it so that's beautiful go on sorry thank you um, Maribel said, true beauty is when you don't need someone to see you physically and already know that you are absolutely beautiful. True beauty is not how you look, but the confidence, comfort, and security you have with yourself. When our countenance glows with inner peace and happiness, we radiate real beauty. Happiness comes from what we give ourselves to others. It comes from the love we feel in relationships that are dear to us. We are most beautiful when we are reaching out to, lifting, helping, and thus loving others. Um, I want you to be my life coach. I almost got a little teary-eyed when I heard that. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea, for giving your reason to this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to listen to and Maribel talk all day. <sighs> Look, Miss Hibbler is getting wet behind the eyes. Look, <laughs> you guys are filled with so much hope. Do you know how cool you are, classifier? Do you know? Do you know you? Do you know your internal identity? Anything else coming up, miss? Yes. Um, our feelings are beauty because you are showing others and yourself how you truly feel about certain things or just in general. Mm. Which had, in like in drama, that, that's beauty. Think about like, like, always in the back of your mind during this lesson, think about what you're gonna put in your identity box. Think about the behaviors you're striving for and what you wanna leave behind. I think we gotta move on soon, miss. Okay, make sure everyone. I hate being the time person. Okay, so you're gonna watch three short like films, commercials. Um, they're like commercial length. Um, and you're going to respond to these questions. Does anyone wanna unmute and read them? stop hearing my voice <laughs> don't get frustrated if you lost your definition just you got it in your heart you're putting your identity box but like does beauty does beauty cause it like maybe maybe they're kind of like in the wrong order like do you guys think like beauty now i'm talking like green bubble beauty so we switched back right the beauty meaning like they're the beauty that's created by society what you put in the green cloud is that dangerous does that kind of beauty cause racism because we kind of lose these definitions of beauty are beautiful which you just wrote but not everyone knows it people think beauty is just the green bulb so does that cause racism does it cause is it dangerous does beauty when i say beauty i mean green bubble beauty fake beauty does, does beauty hurt people? And then who can we blame for this? Um, Kevin Pastor's definition of beauty is Miss Hibbler. Just letting you know. <laughs> Are you realizing you didn't like hit submit? Are you like putting it in? <laughs> L-M-F-A-O-O-O. -O -O. Don't tell us what that means. Okay. Okay, uh, so you are responding. We have a collaboration board. Okay, so, Kevin, calm down. Miss, should we watch the videos first then respond? Yeah, I think we. I think some kids have answers to this already. Okay. Like, I, I, you guys, like, go fire, go hard, start writing in this, and then let me know, Miss. Are you gonna play these videos? You're gonna try playing them? Yes. Okay. okay. You may want to open it in another window to make it big. Oh, that's fine. I guess. Okay. Let's zoom in. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear on my end. Hey guys, 
Look close, it's gonna happen fast. This is what society's definition of beauty does to us. The sound is weird. Okay, but let's just watch. And it ends with no wonder our perception of beauty is distorted or like messed up or not true. So um, is beauty dangerous? Explain. What does beauty cause? Miss Boteo's coming in. Get ready, get fire. So it's like, like, does anyone want to unmute themselves? Like first, like before we process that? I mean, that's crazy. We, we're brainwashed. Are we not? Do you guys agree with me? Let's hear your voices. Well, for me, I think that we kind of are being what you think about it because there's making us want to achieve something which is not even real in the first place. Like instead they should try to get people who are like, like different, I guess you could say, to show like everyone could be beautiful and so gain like a certain type of body type or a certain type of look which is like false, I guess you could say. Mm. Okay, so miss, let's keep playing this and guys keep like responding. Talk to each other on the collaboration board. This video makes a similar point. And I want you to think like, okay, well, what race is everyone and what do they do with skin color? December 18th, 2011, a global proposal was created to encourage mandatory disclaimers when manipulating bodies in advertising. But Miss, didn't you say yesterday, like, who reads disclaimers? No one reads disclaimers. I'm lucky if you guys read my Google Classroom posts. Like, no one, so it's just like, how, how does that help things? So Miss, it's up to you. Yeah, Miss Potato Twinkles. Should we like digest some of this, these thoughts before we move on to the race? What do we think? I think so. Does anyone want to unmute and, and teach us, first of all? Because you guys know way more than us. Well, we get all these responses. You guys have things to say. Teach us. I think that um, beauty to be dangerous because at such a young age we look at these videos and we think that's the definition of beauty when those those bodies or those looks aren't even realistic right that's not fair to kids to see that or anyone other thoughts whoa you guys are on fire, kind of like, kind of, and it's okay to like not have the words, talk out your thoughts. Orion says, yes, beauty, in quotes, is dangerous because it makes many people feel insecure and causes them to starve themselves at times to fit society's standards. And colorism, what is colorism? 
Vidi. Vidi, what, can you explain colorism in your own words? Vidi. Or anyone? I can't talk because I'm, mm -hmm. he put in the chat, oh, I can't talk, okay. No worries, does anyone want else want to explain what colorism is? Maribel put the immense global pressure to conform to a white European ideal, including light skin, straight hair, and a slim figure. Mm. I think that, um, hi guys, so good to see you. Um, I think that um, colorism is something that is interesting because it's within, like within your own race. And I know it happens in Mexico. I know it's in very much part of Mexican culture. It's very much part of um, black culture, Asian culture, where um, even within your own race, the lighter skin you have, somehow the better you are or the more beautiful you are or um, the more value people put on who your identity based on the lightness of your skin. So in case you're wondering what that term colorism means, it's kind of like saying like, oh, the darker you are, the uglier you are in any race or ethnicity. So I just wanna clarify that for those of you who maybe have never heard of that before, because I know you know what it is, cause you like, how many of us have had like siblings nicknames be like Negra and that's your nickname. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so just thinking about that as part of, again, these different um, expectations of what like beautiful means and how it's attached to like the European ideal of beauty. Okay, I'll stop now. No, Miss, I was so hoping you would like help us Thank you so much. I was like, please talk. Okay. Any other things popping popping out? Um, maybe we want to watch like a few seconds of this video and and yeah. guess what Miss Poteo just said. A great segue into this video too. Which doll is the black doll? Oh no, sorry. All good, miss. You're doing great. Thank you. Which doll is the black doll? And which one is the white doll? Which doll is the pretty doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? Which doll is the nice doll? And which doll is the bad doll? And, well, and why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and you have two eyes. Which doll is the ugly doll? Why is that doll ugly? Because, he, because he's black. Can you stop it there? Doll looks most like you. So, like, there are so many good ideas here, first of all. Um, I mean, I feel like Angelina is summarizing the Facing History unit that we're going into, but, um, so you guys, I'm so excited for you and excited for your identity boxes, but, like, it, does anyone want to explain, like, is beauty, is beauty, now this is society's beauty, beauty, is that to blame for, like, some of the racism that's continuing to go on in our country? Does beauty perpetuate racism? Can anyone speak to that? Be brave. I think Ms. Boteo kind of answered that. And we sort of already have, but does anyone have a story or an experience? No? Oh, well, can I say something? This kind of, I don't think off topic or anything, because I remember something like, um, I forgot who told me, but I think it happened in Mexico or something like that, that supposedly like a lot of girls, like let's say they're Mexican and stuff, and they got robbed or they're missing, they won't do much news about it. And when there's a white girl who got lost or something, they're making big news about it or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So the media, like what the media chooses to focus on and the types of thing, images that we see kind of contribute to what we perceive to be like this fake ideal. Any other thoughts? Beanie says, yes, because even now, for example, Latinas are sometimes found attractive for being toxic or like spicy, if that makes sense. It does. But if Black women act the same way, they're found unattractive. Yeah, like there are even stereotypes for like the personality type that you should have based on your race, aren't there? All right, so taking all of that, do, we have 20 minutes left, so we got to move to the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But guys, this is going to be a new assignment, kind of your responses to this movie um, on the collaboration board are really, really important. We're going to connect back to this movie um, a lot during the unit. So I need you to pay attention and miss once in a while scrub ahead just because mm -hmm. of our time constraints. But I need you to write and react to the movie. Uh, let's skip this one. I think we all agree. Beauty's a brainwashing machine. Mm -hmm. So we may like say questions out loud while we're watching this film. And Miss, if you could do a split screen where we see half the collaboration board. Okay. Or like uh, minimize your video. And then everyone get ready to write. Um, on the collaboration board and really pay attention and really listen for hints because this movie ties all in. It's giving you a preview for World War II. It's kind of like a, 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 a depiction of what you're going to learn about in Mr. Bryant's class. And it all connects to beauty. So make sure you're writing live in the collaboration board and talking to each other. Why is she there? Nurse, brought you your sleeping medicine, honey. Is it night already? It's 9.30. What about the day? What about it? Was it a beautiful day? Was the sun out? Was it warm? Kind of warm. Clouds. Were there clouds in the sky? I suppose there were. I never was much for staring up at the sky all the time. I used to look up at the clouds a lot. If you stare at them long enough, they become things, you know? Ships, people, anything you want, really. If you stare at them long enough. It's time to take your temperature now. This one other thing. Well? When, nurse, when will they take the bandages off? How long? Until, until they decide it's safe for your face. I know. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Worse. But it's pretty bad, isn't it? I know it's pretty bad. Ever since I was a little girl, people have always turned away from me. I can remember a child screaming when she looked at me. I never wanted to be beautiful. I just wanted, I just wanted people not to scream when they looked at me. When nurse, when will they take the bandages off? Please. Easy, easy, let me take your temperature. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. You've been waiting so long now, it really doesn't make that much difference, whether it's two days or weeks. That does it.
Maybe, maybe scrub a little, Jess. Oh wait, we got to hear the mean nurses. Sorry. Three oh seven. If it were mine, I'd bury myself in the grave someplace. You have been introduced to Miss Janet Tyler. Okay, scrub, scrub ahead of the. World um, of the a universe whose um, dimensions are the size, thickness, and length of mm -hmm. the. Warm this evening, Miss Tyler. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very warm. You can take my word for it. We'll have those bandages off you very shortly. I expect you're uncomfortable. I'm used to it by now. I have no doubt. This is your ninth? Is this your ninth procedure? What? Yeah. Sometimes I think I live my whole She says life. the 11th. Sorry, I talked over it. 11 surgeries. No comfort though, living in a cave. It's so private. No one can ever see me. Hopeless isn't a doctor. I'll never look any different. Well, it's hard to say. Up until now, you haven't responded to any of our procedures. But there's no way of telling. Not until we get the ramping off. No more after this, are there? No more try. I don't know what else we can do. Not without endangering your life. You very well may have responded to this last treatment. We just won't know for sure until I take those wraps off. But if I haven't responded, then what? There are alternatives. Like? Don't you know? I know. You're not alone, Miss Tyler. You realize that, don't you? You're hardly alone. Many others share your misfortune. People who look much as you do. Now, one of the alternatives, should this last procedure prove to be unsuccessful, the state will allow you to live comfortably among those of your own kind. My own kind? It's a haven for people like you. Now, who knows? You might even like it then. It's not fair, doctor. I don't want to live among freaks. I want to live among normal people. Look, Miss Tyler, we are not unsympathetic to your condition. Your presence here in this hospital attests to that. We're going to do everything we can for you, but you're going to have to be realistic. I could wear a mask or this bandage. I wouldn't bother anyone. I'd just go my own way. I'd take a job, any job. Who are you people anyway? And what gives you the right to decide where I live and how I live? I'm just a doctor. Only the state can determine social policy. All we can do is follow the rules that they lay down for us. But it's not fair, doctor. People who are different having to live, stay away from the people who are normal. Who decides what's normal? The state isn't God, doctor. Miss Tyler, please. But the state is not God. It has the right to, to punish people for an accident of birth. It hasn't the right to make ugliness a crime? Miss Tyler! Now I've gotta ask that you stop this kind of talk immediately. Do you understand me? Immediately! Guys, make sure you're typing on Nearpod. So maybe scrub, 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 scrub. She goes to the window, she looks, she thinks about her life, she starts to freak out, hit play, miss. <laughs> The next one? Um, no, no, I think we can see the end of this one. Oh, oh no. It's okay. It's okay. So it goes to these extremes. She loses her mind. You can go to the next video, miss. So basically, I'll kind of summarize. She loses her mind. They're going to numb her. So think about how humans numb themselves these days, right? So, like, they're not, like, facing the truth. So is this the third, is, we're going to the second one. So second one. And um, make a prediction on Nearpod. What do you think she's gonna look like under the mask? So a lot of you guys stopped writing, so make sure you're writing actively. Um, make predictions about what's gonna happen. Thank you, Wendy and everyone. No such thing as too many post-its. So scrub ahead a little, sorry, miss. So scrub ahead, the doctor's having doubts, the doctor, doctor's questioning, and the nurse is like, oh no, don't ask questions, This we're doing something good for her. 
But like asking questions can help us to fight oppression, but the doctor continues to listen to this dictator. Now listen to this dictator. Who does this guy remind you of? You can hit play now, miss. One leader, one voice, one world. This guy's all about conformity. Everyone should look the same. Why is that dangerous? It's okay, miss. It is so hard. Cross your fingers and... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I shall talk to you about glorious conformity, about the delight and the ultimate pleasure of our unified society. You recall, of course, that directionless, unproductive, over-sentimentalized era in man's history when it was assumed that dissent was a natural and healthy adjunct to society. Do you recall that during this period of time, there was a strange, over-sentimentalized concept that it mattered not that people were different, that this world could exist in some sort of crazy patchwork glued together in a fragmented society. We know now that that was wrong. Now, as I am that, I want you to keep your eyes open. I want you to describe to me the different shading of the light as you perceive it, as each layer of those bandages come off. So maybe uh, scrub a little, miss, scrub a little. So basically she's kind of like, well, what if it doesn't work? What if the surgery didn't work? Please, can anyone unmute and predict how she's gonna look after? Right, very uh, bright. Pause for a second, miss. Like just, I wanna hear, I, I, I really, really wanna hear, what do you guys think she's gonna look like after the bandages come off? Like, what do you think we will see? And if you've seen it, some, some of you are private messaging me. If you've seen it, don't like tell what she looks like. But can we make a prediction? How is she going to look? Are you guys there or did you leave? She's going to look like Barbie. So what? The surgery worked? So is the surgery going to be successful, not successful? So maybe miss like click play and then you guys can keep writing your predictions in. So basically the, the, the woman's worried that it's not gonna work and so the doctor proposes extermination as a solution. I can, I can see your outline, just vaguely, but I can see you. Now I'm gonna remove the last bandage, Miss Tyler. Do you want a mirror? No. No, thank you. No mirror. I want you to remember one thing, Miss Tyler. Are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. We've done all we could. If we were successful, all well and good. There are no problems. If, however, this final procedure has not achieved the desired results, keep in mind you can still live a long and fruitful life among people of your own kind. As soon as we discover these results, we can either release you or... Doctor? Yes. If, if I'm so, if I'm still so ugly, is there any other alternative? Could, could I be put away? Under certain circumstances, Miss Tyler, the state does provide for the extermination of certain undesirables. There are many factors to be considered, though, that bear on that decision. And under the circumstances, considering your age and your general physical condition. I doubt very much if we could permit anything but your transfer to a communal group of people with your, your disability. You'll make me go then. That'll probably be the case. All right, Miss Tyler, now, remain very quiet, please. And keep your eyes open. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. Let them see. All right, Miss Tyler. Now here comes the last of it. 
I wish you every good luck. Bro, sorry, it's a, it's, it, it, there are three videos. Okay, go hit play, miss. Great. <laughs> We've been I'm laughing about it. Oh, oh, take you. You'll be with your own kind, and after a little while, you'd be amazed at how little a while you feel a sense of great belonging. You'll feel a sense of being loved, and you will be loved. Miss Tyler. Can you turn it down, miss? Just turn it down. Okay, so um, we, I want to, before we leave, because we're going into, this is the last class, <laughs> before spring break, except we have async days when we're working in our identity box. Look at the poll. Do you get it? Please admit if you don't get it, please unmute and explain to us, OMG, what is happening? What is happening? I don't know. It's Tyler. Can you turn the volume down, Miss Sibler? Yeah. Thank you. So anyone, so I, I would like people to unmute because time is so short. What is going on? What, why, what just happened? Can someone explain, can someone teach the class? Cause they'll understand it if you explain it. Mm -hmm. So maybe miss like totally, so, like stop it entirely. Okay. Um, guys, are you out there? I would like you to explain what, what just happened. Like out loud. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. what was, was kind of happening is like she isn't in the beauty has standard of that society, I guess you could say. Like she might look normal to us, I guess you could say, but like for them, the beauty standard is like more different. So like since she doesn't look that way and stuff, people are kind of criticizing her and saying like she's not like them. Like they're different species, and that the people who are the beauty standard are superior than the people who don't are not that beauty standard, I guess you could say. Like, I agree with her. Because I feel like she really is beautiful, but since she doesn't look like how they look or isn't up to their standards, she feels ugly, and they kind of treat her as if she's less than them. Anyone else? Do we all understand it now? So what is the lesson of the film, Beauty is in the Eye of the Beholder? Is, is beauty even... Is beauty really a real thing? 
Or is it up to us to like fight against this? Anyone final thoughts, things that you're thinking about? Guys, I need you to, because I've had classes and like, like a full on AP students and they don't understand the film and they stay quiet. Do you guys understand the, do you get what, do you get what Andrea and Priscilla just said? So you're telling me that this cute, what's his name? Mr. Smith is ugly? Him? Mr. Smith? And she's ugly? No? She feels ugly because she doesn't look like them, like the majority. So is, is beauty about conform, like according to society, is beauty conformity? So, but Orion, to clarify, you mean beauty, not your personal definition of beauty, beauty. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, quotation mark beauty, quotation mark. Beauty. Can you explain? Can you explain, Orion? Elaborate. Um, okay, I don't really know how to explain this. Um, basically, I would say like the quotation mark beauty would be to um, how do I say it? To um, the quotation mark beauties would basically just to be fit in. And if you don't fit in, then you're you're seen as an outcast. You know, I don't really know how to explain that all the way. I think you did. Like, yeah. you just, they're like, you're gone. Like, we don't like how you look. Get out of here. So, and Angie, I don't know if you're there, if you want to explain the World War II connection, because you explained it earlier. But all of this ties in, like, beauty can be used to um cause something like the holocaust basically and that's where we're going now we're all just scratching the surface and you're gonna go deep with your identity box during async days okay so please stay tuned to google classroom anything that you post on thursday or friday for your identity box or building onto your facing history notebook adding onto your beauty collage Figuring out what are these negative and positive behaviors that cause conformity and things like this to happen. Any of your work, one single post will give you full credit for your async days. Okay? It's 1122. You guys are amazing. May you be happy and healthy. May you love others freely. Thank you, Ms. Hibbler. Thank you, Ms. Bojao, for stopping in. I wish class went 20 minutes more. We really need a seminar. This should be a whole college class. Namaste, everyone. <laughs> Namaste.